This is ExamTools.org. ExamTools.org is a system developed by the makers of HamStudy.org for administering exams online. A coordinating volunteer examiner will log into the system by going to the VE Admin section and then by entering their username and password to log into the VE Tools. A new test session can be added by clicking on the Sessions button in the toolbar and then clicking Add New. You then enter the event name of the event of the test session, which is what will appear to all of the users. Select the VEC. And then enter the location of the exam session in the location box. The location box is powered by a, an autocomplete with Google Maps, so you will need to get the exact address. Uh, as you're typing it in, there will be autocomplete dropdowns. You may notice that you have a problem and needs to be fixed. Once it's fixed and you select it, it will show up on the map. Uh, and it will also have the latitude and longitude, which is important because once we have enough test sessions in our system, uh, we'll be able to add the ability for users to look up examination sessions by geographical area or find nearby test sessions, which we expect will be a very helpful feature for a lot of users. Next we select the time zone, which for us is Denver, and we set the date and time. We'll use today's date, July 21st, and approximately 9 o'clock p.m. We'll then enter the fee amount, which is $14 for W5YI test sessions. We'll indicate the pre-registration is required, which means they need to register ahead of time online. We can also add notes, which are uh, markdown enabled, so you can use markdown formatting. The notes will show up both on the uh, registration page when they go to look at the exam on hamstudy.org, as well as being emailed to them uh, when after they finish registering, so that they get a copy and a reminder of where the exam session is and what things they may need to bring, any notes that you may want to put into the, uh, the session. We also have this schedule only option, which is for exam sessions that wish to be listed on hamstudy.org, but are not using the exam tools system in order to administer their exams. So now we'll go ahead and we will save that. We'll see that it's there. And now we can open another tab. We can go to hamstudy.org slash sessions. We will now see that listed by me, KD7BBC in American Fork, Utah. We can open that in a map and see the location where I've specified that it's at. Um, and somewhat more importantly, we can come in here. We can see the notes that were left, where it is, the details. And uh, I must have accidentally made that... I left it as schedule only. So you can see you can still come back and edit it later. And now, when we refresh the page, we'll see that this now has a register button. So now we're going to register. Now, if I am a new applicant, I'm going to come in here. I'll say that I'm testing for a new app license. Uh, we'll make something up with a real email address. Um, And you'll notice as you go through, it will actually look up the address in the USPS database. This is important because this makes sure that uh, we have a valid uh, mailing address for the applicant, which helps cut down on errors. So let's look this up. That's obviously not actually my house. It's just a, a random building that I know the address of in American Fork. Now you can put phone and fax. It's going to use this information both to request an FRN number, if I don't have one already, as well as to provide, as well as to fill out the 605 form automatically. Let's go next. I'll say whether I have an FRN number. If I do, it's just going to prompt me to put it in now. Uh, if I've forgotten my FRN, it's going to allow me to do a search, and it will then search. And it does appear that that, that Mr. John Doe has been registered uh, in uh, in Utah, which is interesting. Um, and I could copy this FRN number and then come back in here and say, okay, I found it. 
or if I'm a new applicant, more likely I probably don't have an FRN number, and we're going to help them out with that. So uh, you can, they put their social security number in, they'll put in a password, now you'll see that uh, it's going to tell them here what they need in order to make this a valid password. That's because the ULS has some very specific requirements for what is a valid password for the, uh, for the FRN. It requires, of course, uppercase letters and lowercase letters and a number or a special character. At least you need three of those four to be green in order for this to be considered a valid password. Uh, and then, of course, the two passwords have to match. And since I just picked garbage, I'll have to type it again. Uh, but once I type two passwords that are valid, uh, then I can continue on. I can set a security password. Uh, I can come up with some sort of a security answer, which is what's going to be provided to the FRN, or to the FCC. Now, I would uh, go ahead and request FRN here, but as I said before, this is all live, and uh, I don't want to actually request an FRN number for a bogus social security number. Uh, the FCC probably wouldn't appreciate that. Uh, which is too bad. I'd, I'd like to show you that process, but uh, once you're done requesting the FRN, which will pop up in another window, you come back here, you either copy and paste or you type it in, and you put the FRN number into this box, and then you will be ready to go, and you can click Next. It's important to note that no electronic record containing the social security number ever goes through our website or our system. Uh, it's sent directly to the FCC, they give us an FRN, we type the FRN here, and now we're ready to complete the registration. So we review it, we make sure that all the information is correct, uh, and assuming it is, we click Finish Registration, and here we are. On this page, the applicant can review the information about the test session, they can see their four-digit PIN, which is what they'll use to identify themselves on the computer system when they get to our exam session. Uh, and uh, they will also receive an email copy of this in their email box, but it's that four-digit code is the main thing that they need in order to continue with the system. So now that we've seen how the registration works, let's take a look at what the actual process is to administer an exam. Now, the VE, the contact VE, the one who's coordinating the session, the coordinating VE, is going to come in here and they're going to click on demo set uh, on the session and they will now see everybody who's registered for that. And if they click on them they can view and even edit the information um, and then another useful thing they can do here is they can click print and you'll see that it has filled out the 605 form for them. Uh, but we can do a little bit better than that and so what we're actually going to do is we're going to come in here into the manifest before the exam starts, and we're going to say we have three VEs. The first one is KD7BBC. The second one is NV7V, my father-in-law. Uh, the third one is AC7DM, my father. And uh, we'll say that uh, I am going to be in spot one, Dad Whitehead will be in two, and my father will be in three. Now when we come in here and we print the form, you will see that we have already been pre-filled out here at the bottom. All we will have to do is sign, uh, is provide our signatures there. Now we're going to tell this that it is a in-progress session, which means that we've started the session. We're going to set a session password. This is an area that we might want to consider making more secure, perhaps assigning a specific password to each VE rather than using a single password. But at the beginning of each session, we assign a password for the session that we then share with all of the VEs. They will then be able to start and stop examinations as well as any other operations that are necessary using that their VE call sign, which is on the VE manifest, and the password that was assigned to the session uh, by the coordinating VE. So we'll set a password, really simple one. We'll save, and now the test session is ready to go. What we'll do is we will open up the exam portal, uh, the applicant portal. There's actually two different ways that you can take an exam using exam tools. The first of the two ways is to take it using an, a computer which is connected to the internet. Uh, so we go to examtools.org and one of the VEs now needs to log into the test session. So they'll do that by using their call sign and the session password. They will log in. 
And this takes us to what we call the applicant portal. Now, KD7BBC, I am the contact coordinating VE for this session. Uh, we use my account, that's how we put it in. So that's the reason that that's here, uh, not because I was the one who logged it into this system. And so now we need a four digit pin to sign into the exam. Now, if you remember, they were given a four digit pin and it was 5858. And so what I'll do is I'll say 5858, and I'll click sign in. And now one of the VEs will need to come and they will check the name that I'm signing in as, and they will verify that they've paid the $14 testing fee, and they will verify that they have looked at the two forms of identification. We always check the two forms of ID when they sit down at the computer. That makes sure that there's no way that they may have switched applicants between registration and now, for example. And we check that we have, uh, that the applicant has signed and dated their form 605. Now we can also print the applicant 605 form here. Uh, so if you have a, comp uh, a printer that's available from all of your computers, all of your devices, you can print it there instead of the other. Now here, I'm going to do a digital signature, which consists of my call sign and the session password. Um, and this will log that I stated that I have done, I checked these things and that I, I have done that. And then that takes us into uh, where we, we can start the exam. Now this individual has not taken their technician exam, so we click start technician exam, and here we go. And this takes us into the examination. Now one very important thing to realize about this exam is this exam is completely unique. Every single exam that is generated by this system is generated using a cryptographically secure random number generator, which is definitely overkill, but ensures that no two people are going to get the same order of questions, no two people will get the same selection of questions on their exam. So I can, uh, I can go through and pick random questions, uh, random answers, but of course that is not ever going to result in a pass. Um, you can see what it looks like when we have a figure. It uh, puts it in there as well. And uh, I'm, just, I'm just pressing A, B, C, D at random in order to get through this. Uh, once you see exam complete up here, then you have the option of grading exam. And then we click grade exam. And again, VE call sign, session password. And you'll see that I failed the exam. So... Uh, as soon as now, once that's happened, back on the VE portal, you now see that I am red here. And uh, if we wait for probably about 30 seconds, this will automatically update. There we go, right there. Uh, now you can see the results that I have failed that exam. And I can click in here and I can come down and I can print the results. And these results tell you exactly which questions were in the sub element or which, which questions were on the exam. They tell you what was answered and whether it was correct or if it was not correct, what it should have been. You'll also notice that uh, what time the exam was started and what time the exam was stopped. <clears throat> and so we can print out this, uh, this form if we want to, and that's what we send into the VEC when we submit them. If the applicant chooses to take the exam again, they will show up as a second entry, uh, as a basically a second person, but under the same name, so you can see all their statistics. This page doubles as both a status page as well as a printable uh, VE manifest page or manifest page of the session which can be sent in with the paper uh, submission to a VEC if that's the way that they choose to accept things. And obviously if I had passed the exam it would then allow me to take the, tech the general exam and it, allow it would allow me to take the amateur extra exam. We have been using this system to administer exams for a number of years. Uh, and it works really well because you can use anything from old laptops, which you may have sitting around, to uh, really super cheap Amazon Kindle tablets, which is a popular choice recently. Works in landscape or in portrait mode, uh, and they can take the exam on those. All you need is a place where you've got an internet connection for all of those devices to use computerized tests. Sometimes the availability of those devices uh, is insufficient. And so we also have the option of using paper tests, which can be generated on examtools.org and then administered with a bubble answer sheet and scanned just using a regular webcam on a computer or a mobile device. 
Uh, we have it working on both iOS and on Android. And uh, we use it in our test session as an overflow. So if we run out of devices or if we have somebody who's more comfortable on paper, they have the option of doing so. Exam Tools makes it very easy on the VEs for grading and it provides instant immediate feedback to applicants who seem to appreciate being able to know instantly whether they passed or they failed. Exam Tools is a complex system, but it's actually fairly simple in principle. Uh, we focus on security, we focus on ease of use, and most of all we focus on making sure that the experience for both the VEs and the applicants is the best that it can be. We feel very strongly that it is a much better system than the traditional systems of uh, simply using paper and often many of those exam sessions only have a few different versions of the exam which tends to not be an ideal situation especially because it means all they have to do is at worst try several different times and eventually get, they'll get the same exam over again. Exam Tools is not intended primarily as a for-profit initiative. It is being done by Signal Stuff, the company that pr produces hamstudy.org, which is run by me, Richard Bateman, KD7BBC. And I am very happy to discuss with anybody options for integrating it better with uh, VECs and with other VE teams. At the end of the day, the most important thing is just to find ways that we can improve the hobby that we love and to protect the integrity of the examination process, which honestly has not changed much over the last 15 to 20 years, despite the fact that technology is marching on around us. Uh, I speak very frequently with individuals who would love to use a system like this. We have uh, four or five other examination sessions in the nation who are already using exam tools, uh, free of charge, and for now that's the, that's the model that I'm following. Uh, if I scale too much, we'll have to find some way to make sure that the service is a little bit more self-supporting. But it's also being supported by the antenna sales at signalstuff.com, which is our primary support for uh, ham study. It's being supported by ICOM sponsorship of hamstudy.org. And uh, we are most concerned about finding ways that, that this can work for everybody and uh, that we can improve the overall situation and just work together. Uh, this is a hobby that we love. I'm a third generation ham. My father got his license in 1976 and his father got his in 1944. So uh, it's something that I've spent a lot of time, a lot of my life I've known about and looked into and understood. And uh, it's something that I'd like to see continue to, to grow and that, that I hope that my son will be interested in. So if you have any questions, you can contact me at support at hamstudy.org love to see what you think in the comments. Uh, if anybody is interested in using it with their exam session or even just listing their session on hamstudy.org slash sessions in the session database, uh, please feel free to drop us a line and we'd be happy to help. We'd be happy to talk and we'd be happy to see what kind of collaboration we can do to keep moving forward. 7-3 and have a great day.